as Rick mentioned, I'm with Nutrient, a company that was founded by the dairy industry, founded by the dairy industry and the dairy cooperatives to address the environmental issues. And uh, so one of the things that we talk a lot about as part of Nutrient is putting together manure management systems. What, what you find is many of these systems or many of these technologies don't operate in a vacuum. They, they are dependent on other systems before and after them. And so what we've found here at Nutrient is there's no single place to identify all of the technologies that you need. And so what we try to do is, is bring the technology types together so that they can be looked at by their impact and so that we can, we can help people understand what the, the technologies are and where they can have a place where they can go. And that's what we call our nutrient technology catalog. And you're able to go to nutrient.com and then click on catalog and go there. You'll, you'll see specific information on many different technologies, over 200 right now, um, approaching 300. And we're soon going to be expanding that to include assessments by what they solve. And it, it may seem a little, um, it may seem a little odd to talk about multiple different types of technologies to some of the other um, animal groups, but in the dairy industry, we have some processors and some dairymen who use flush manure who basically are using so much water that they're dealing with a very, very dilute liquid, and others who are actually scraping sand-laden manure or doing something called a dry pack where it's, the solids are very, very high. So you're talking about um, materials that can be anywhere in between. And so what we try to do is we try to give everybody opportunities to look at what the, what the, oper uh, what the technologies are out there to handle all of these different products. Specifically today, our focus is gonna be on fine solid separation. And in general, this is gonna, this is gonna deal with products and, and equipment that's doing it on an ongoing basis. Uh, Jeff is gonna touch on, on similar technology in that it uses a polymer-assisted fine solids uh, removal, but it's not gonna be on an ongoing basis. And so as we look at this, we're, we're talking about mechanically-assisted separation and dewatering. And so many of these systems that we talk about are actually made up of several different components and in that respect, they generally start with their first step, removing the coarse solids. Now again, for certain manures, this isn't as big of an issue. If you're dealing in the pork industry, you won't have the coarse solids that we refer to in the, in the dairy industry because you don't have the long fibers. But the long fibers, the very large long fibers, tend to interfere with the, with the flocculation and the building of a good flock and therefore, primarily in fine solid separation, we see a coarse solid separation step first. This is usually done either by a slope screen or a screw press or a rotary dumb screen. And what you're trying to do is remove those easy to remove fibers so that you get basically just the colloidal suspension in. And what happens is the, the phosphorus tends to follow that smallest solid. So you will get some phosphorus removal at this stage, but not very much. Um, this is removing the big chunks, if you will. As we move on from there, I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens when we add the polymer, because we start out with something that, that looks a little bit like the diagram on the, on the right or the left. The soil particles are there. They've got a little bit of charge to them, but they're really almost neutral in the water. If you were to take now, some of the manure, the flush manures, for example, and put it into a jar, it would take a week for you to get any discernible settling out of it. And so what we have to do is find ways that we can bring that manure particle into a state where we can get it out of the water, where it's no longer naturally buoyant, um, either by settling or by floating it out. And we use a long chain polymer, ionic polymer chain with a negative charge to bring these soil particles together. And, and that allows us, that flocculation allows us to bring the pieces together and, and either move them up or down. 
This is an actual uh, photograph of a flocculated dairy manure. So we would have looked at this before we add the flocculant, you would have seen kind of a uniform brown consistency after the flocculant, and this had air added, so it floated the manure. You see a lot of the free tea water at the bottom, but you see this mat of material on top. Now that mat of material is still very, very liquid. It's very flowable. It's, it's, uh, it's got a little bit of um, a feeling to it, but this is like pudding at this point. And so one of the things that we have to, we have to do, this, this may be a good place to remove a lot of the water um, so we can take decant or, or take out the bottom part of that. But then we're going to have to go to the next step. And that's the fourth step in our process. And that's the use of a mechanical system to dewater. And so we actually, at this point, take a bunch of these chains that are still fairly loosely associated with a lot of free water in between, and we actually start to squeeze the water out. And some of the systems that we use to do that are, are very similar to the um, solid, the coarse solid separation equipment. There are people who have modified um, screw presses to do this. There's a type of a modified screw press called a moving disc press where the discs actually move to help keep the fibers and, and the material flowing so you don't get plugging. And the, the goal of all of these is to really drive that water out from inside the flock and create a stackable product. And when we look at polymer assisted dewatering, we're looking for those stackable products, those manageable products on the solid side and a tea colored liquid that is fairly low in nutrients. What you're looking at now is part of the neat nutrient neat matrix, the thing that I mentioned was gonna be on our website soon, that kind of helps you quickly understand what happens when you use this sort of polymer assisted dewatering. So your nitrogen recovery is gonna stay fairly consistent. The nitrogen is gonna go with the liquid because the nitrogen generally is dissolved. Now the organic nitrogen will stay with the solids, but the, the ammonia portion of the nitrogen and the nitrates will go with the liquid because those are dissolved. The phosphorus recovery is very good. We, it has a high impact on phosphorus because the phosphorus follows the smallest solids. Once again, this only will remen, remove the suspended, so the ortho or organic P that is dissolved in the liquid will go along. That's why we don't get 100% removal, but we can get over two thirds of the phosphorus to follow the solids. And in most of these technologies, you're gonna be looking at over 80% phosphorus recovery. Um, you're not gonna get much storage reduction. You're gonna get a little bit of storage reduction. Mostly what's gonna happen in the storage is gonna have a much better product. You're not gonna have solids. You're, you're not gonna to have to worry about cleaning lagoons out. You're not gonna to have to worry about plugging irrigators and things like that. This can have a significant effect on the greenhouse gas if you manage the solids properly. And it will really reduce your odor from your lagoon. Once again, if you manage those solids properly. Finally, there's almost no difference in the pathogens that, that we see in the, in the total system. They're gonna go wherever they go with the solids or the liquid, but there'll still be potentially pathogenic material there that you would have to worry about if you were using this for fertilizer. The real pros to this technology is that it's, it's established, the high phosphorus removal. It's a fairly medium capital cost, CapEx, but it's got good greenhouse gas reduction and good odor reduction as well. The cons are it has a, a fairly high daily operating expense because you will always be putting in polymer and it's very volume dependent. So as you have more water, you're gonna need more polymer. Um, you would think that it would just be solids dependent, but you need to get enough polymer in there that the polymers can create crosslinks. And so you can kind of imagine if you have a lot of water, you need a little more polymer to make those links. And then finally, the, one of the other cons to this is when it simply comes out, it's not going to, be ready to apply. You will either have to compost this mater solid material or do further treatment to it to get it to really be stabilized. And at this point, the polymers that we use are not certified for organic use. 
So you will not get an OMRI certification at this point using the solids from this material in your cropping operations if you're an organic farm. Just like to show you a few examples of some technology providers who have this. Um, this is a, a phosphorus recovery system that's made by DVO. Um, Nutrient is technology provider agnostic, so you're gonna see these in alphabetical order. And you can go to our website and I'll show you where you can get more information as you look at the pages. But DVO uses a DAF style system to recover the phosphorus. You can see what looks like the black chain across the top. That's really a, a set of flights that scrapes that floated material off and moves it to a moving disc press at the end, at the far end of the, at the far end of the equipment. And the blue system in front is the air addition system where we're incorporating air that will float that flock to the top. The next system that we're gonna look at uses an incline screen. The polymer is actually added in a tank in the back. It flows over and this works much like a slope screen. Um, the water soaks or drops through the screen and goes on. The solids drops into this modified screw press and it's dewatered further. This has the disadvantage of not creating quite as dense a solids cake, but this is a system from LWR that um, you, you possibly have seen advertised and that, that works on a principle of more like a, a vibratory screen. The next technology is one that's really just a moving disc press with a tank. PW Tech is one of the companies that, that sells this type of, of volt, they call, what they call a volute dewatering press. Um, all of these technologies can be found on the uh, Nutrient website, but this system probably would be the most practical for a smaller operation because it's, it's got the least um, footprint. This particular uh, piece of equipment that you're looking at here was, was one piece that I was part of testing as we looked at it in, uh, in an operation, and they pulled it in on a trailer behind a, a pickup truck and it, probably the footprint of the trailer, even including the polymer, was no more than about 15 feet wide and about 30 feet long. So very compact, smaller system for somebody who might not be dealing with all of the volume. And then the final one I'm gonna show you today, and I wanted to show this one um, particularly because they use a dissolved air flotation that's very similar, but you can see behind the system here is a rotary screen and a screw press. So they're actually using three different technologies um, and this system also has a moving disc press at the front end. So by the time the solids are coming out, they've actually been treated multiple different ways. This is what the polymer assisted dewatering will give you. You're basically going to end up with a tea colored water like I said, about 80% phosphorus removal and about 91 pounds of total solids per thousand gallons. And you can see that the phosphorus con P205 content is quite low. The, the solid on the other hand is got about 468 pounds per ton of solids. That's because it's, it's really about a 24% dry matter, but it has almost 16 pounds of P205 per ton of solids. So significant amount of the phosphorus moving over into the solid side. And then this gives you an opportunity, particularly in the dairy industry, we've seen that certain fields have a tendency to have higher phosphorus concentrations than others. This gives you an opportunity to move that phosphorus to another area uh, and to be able to um, do that economically rather than having to haul the water. The goal is clean lagoons. No floating material, lower odor, less dredging, something that is not an issue to you and not odorous to your neighbors. And at the same time, an irrigatable liquid that you can use and not worry about plugging up your, your equipment. Um, there are other technologies, for example, membrane separation, which will do this too, but the capital cost is considerably higher. And this is one of those 
significant removal at a medium cost that you can get. Um, if you were to go to the nutrient technology catalog, you would, you would see a bunch of different information. And I just wanted to real quickly touch base on this because there's an area on the right hand side where we include <clears throat> technical and business insights and case studies. And I believe on most of the technologies you saw today, you're gonna to see at least the business insights and the equipment insights. And on a couple of them, you're gonna actually see case studies. Those are opportunities for you to download and get a lot more information on these technologies. And very soon you'll see the development of the critical indicators as well. 